there is a myth from Sumeria which was written down sometime around 2000 BC. Scholars today refer to this myth as the myth of Enki and the world order. The myth opens with the scribe or the writer who was perhaps a poet or a priest praising Enki and Enki of course was the god who had his seat at Eridu. Eridu is among the southernmost sites of the Sumerian culture and as we have discussed in the lecture on the formation of Mesopotamian civilization. This was where Sumerian civilization began. Sumerian civilization was incubated and the basic form and structure of a temple-based polity was first innovated by the ancestors of the people who would create the Sumerian and the Mesopotamian civilization. So this myth, Enki and the World Order, begins with the author praising Enki, the god of Eridu, who is the god of understanding, the god of underground waters, which are fresh waters, which sustain and nourish the soil. So the god of fertility and productivity. And Enki is also the bestower upon mankind of various gifts of civilization, which are known together as the Me and the Namtar, which make up the various cultural components of Sumerian culture. So Enki is an important god for the people and Enki in a sense is the link between the heavenly world of the gods and the productive and enterprising and industrial world, world of the people. So after the opening passage, there is a conversation between Enki and his brother Enlil, who is the chief god of the pantheon of the gods of Sumeria. So Enlil commissions Enki to visit the land of Sumeria, the land which the gods have created and nurtured, and to ensure that the people and the rulers, and even the common people alike, are happy and prosperous and secure and living a good life in Sumeria. So this myth is a very long myth and it has certain passages. Scholars divide this into four major sections. So the opening passage is a narrative in which Enki is praised and the second section is a dialogue between Enki and Enlil in which uh, Enlil asks Enki to visit the land and en Enki talks about the May and the Namtar, the gifts of civilization. The third passage is the longest passage, the longest section of this myth. And in this Enki journeys across the land of Sumeria on his boat, on his barge, to the rivers and canals of the land. And he surveys all the land, he decrees the destiny of the people and the Sumerian world and ensures that all the crafts and industries and agriculture and various other enterprises are going on as they were ordained by the gods. Then he reaches Ur, which is among the oldest great cities of Sumeria. And Ur was in fact founded not very far away from Eridu. Once Eridu was abandoned, the people most likely moved to Ur and the ruins of Eridu, which was in a sense a temple city, were visible from the ramparts of Ur. So there is a connection between Eridu and Ur. But once he reaches Ur, which is also near the coast of the Persian Gulf, from there Enki takes a journey onwards. He travels to the exotic land of Dilmun, which is also considered as a heavenly paradise in Sumerian mythology. Then he travels further on to Magan and from there he travels to another land of Meluha. When scholars of Sumerian civilization first began to read the cuneiform texts of this culture, it was quite clear from the early on, from the 1920s and 30s, that these people had intense contacts with the outside world. And of course, just like the Egyptians had their own geography, and their own way of looking at the world and naming various places and frontiers which surrounded them, so did the Sumerians. This included the nomads of the Martu, it included the Elamites of the highland whom the Sumerians referred to as the Elamites. It referred, it referred to various kingdoms such as Marahasi, which was another inland kingdom east of Elam, and various other people such as the Gutians who lived in the northern highlands. And in the southern seas, the Sumerians spoke about the land of Dilmun, 
the land of Magan and the land of Meluha. So of the first group, Elam, Martu, the Gudians, and various other people of the north were all people that the Sumerians had on and off conflicts with. But for the latter group, the people of Dilmun, Magan and Meluha were important trading partners for the Sumerians. And when Enki set off for these lands from his temple, the temple of Abzu at the old city of Eridu, his intention was to visit these lands and wish prosperity upon the people so they would continue to have trading relations and bring prosperity and their goods and material into the cities of Sumeria and enrich the people of Enki. So while the earlier parts of the text come to us intact, here Enki's visits to these foreign lands, are the lines are slightly broken. Remember these texts were written on clay tablets and we can only read texts which come down to us where the clay tablets are intact. Some of these tablets are broken and therefore we can't read the entire text, but we can reconstruct some words if we find those fragments. So first of all, where are these lands? Now from archaeological excavations in the past few decades or till the 1970s and 1980s, and correlating the finds at these excavation sites with the products that these Sumerian texts mention were imported from these places. We have been able to correlate that Dilmun referred to the area around the island of Bahrain. Magan was slightly difficult to locate and it has been broadly located at the southern tip of the Arabian Peninsula, extending to the other side of the Straits of Oman, so on to the Makran coast. And in fact, the word Makran might contain some hint of the ancient name of Magan. So Magan, like, much like Turkey, extends on both sides of the Bosporus. Magan extended on both sides of the Straits of Oman, so it was an important place. And Meluha has been the most difficult to place. But for certain very solid reasons, and certain solid evidence, we are finally able to conclude in the past two or three decades that Meluha referred to either some city or some region located in the greater Indus Valley region. So the people of Sumeria were trading through the Persian Gulf along the Makran coast of the Arabian Sea with the cities of the Indus Valley civilization. And we know this not just from the text, the texts only tell us what we find just give us more evidence for what we find in the archaeological record. There are hundreds and hundreds of artifacts found from Bahrain, slightly less from Magan, and in various sites we find again dozens and dozens of artifacts found from the Indus Valley civilization. And this is again, like I said, correlated in the textual record. So records of the great king Sargon of Akkad mentioned ships of Meluha sailing to the harbors of his cities, and even later kings such as Gudea mentioned how the Meluhans contributed material to his construction projects at various temples to the gods. Now all this is something that we will discuss in detail. And in a sense, the last three or four lectures of this Deep History of Civilization series have been building up towards this lecture, in which we discuss the world order of these ancient civilizations in the third millennium BC.